What's up, sons of Montezuma? On today's Kiss the Rings episode is none other than SDSU basketball legend number 32, Billy White. I'm surprised Fiend doesn't have like a picture of him in the background, like Chandler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Am I in? Not the quiet. Oh, oh, I am there. There I am. I actually am in there. Oh, right here. I see you. See your hands up. The kiss the rings is just to the left. I'm like holding up both my hands. Yeah, like a field goal. See that? That's me. <laughs> Demo, the black, the the With red, the red hat. Yeah. With it's good. Yeah. It's all good. All right, everybody, welcome back, Aztec Nation, to a new Sons of Montezuma podcast. Kiss the Rings edition. And of course, I am joined by my two Kiss the Rings crew co hosts. You cannot stop him. You can only hope to contain him. He's known for wearing that red cowboy hat, although I haven't seen it lately. He's been walking the Sons of Monty cap. It's good to see him once again. SD Sports Fiend, welcome, welcome. Hey, I'm excited to be back, guys. Season is here. The boys are back. Ready to get into it. And now making his way from East Tahoe, checking in. He's been uh, chomping at the bit to record a new Aztecs basketball episode, and we're glad to have him. It is the sandwich aficionado himself. <laughs> What's going on? Mike toured a lot. What's up, guys? I'm excited to be back. Excited to see you guys. Been a long off season, but we're ready to get rolling here. And, um, you know, I'm excited to uh, interview uh, our guest tonight. It has been a while. Aztecs basketball is just about to kick up. Make sure uh, all you guys that are listening and watching on YouTube, make sure you give us a like and subscribe and definitely check out our Mountain West preview that we recorded, uh, I want to say a couple weeks ago, with uh, the Aztec Breakdown podcast. That was a really good look at the season coming up, all the opponents. And hey, it's it's about that time, a little under a month. And so we're going to be recording some new episodes coming up, the team preview and just looking at our schedule as a group collectively. Can't wait for that. Okay, guys, well, we should be excited because the new season is upon us. But on top of that, we are being joined by an Aztec legend, the way we normally like to do it. Mike, you do your intro, so we let Mike let Mike cook. Let's let him in. Our next guest to the Sons of Montezuma podcast is SDSU's all-time leader in Game Started, a Las Vegas, Nevada native. This left-hander played for SDSU from 2007 until 2011, capping off his career with arguably one of the greatest Aztec teams in history. He elevated his play in the 2010-11 postseason with three consecutive double-doubles after only having two in his first 130 college games. The guest not only started more games than any other Aztec, he has the highest career field goal percentage, highest defensive win shares at 8.7, most win shares at 18.4. He is first in field goal percentage of the year in 2008, but unfortunately also has the most personal fouls in his career. <laughs> he loves the game so much, he went 12 for 12 shooting in a game on Valentine's Day in 2009 against Wyoming. He is third all time in efficiency points and fourth in single season steals. This two time all Mountain West Conference tournament team member also was a 2007 and 2008 Mountain West Conference Rookie of the Year and all Mountain West Conference team member. It is our privilege and honor to welcome to the podcast, Mr. Billy White. Billy, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, man, I appreciate you all, you guys for having me. 
I'm glad we can make it work, man. Is is there any possible way to turn it landscape ways? Does that work? There like we this? go. There we go. Yeah. Everybody wants to see you. They don't want to look at us. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely one of the one of the Aztec Nation's favorites. Definitely one of my personal favorites, you know, watching you play in the red and black those years. I mean, man, we thought those were, you know, some of the, the glory years of the program, being able to see you and so many other big names playing with under Coach Fisher. And one of the things that stands out to me for sure, guys, is that passion, that passion that Billy brought to the game. I love that that intro, man. Mike, you knocked that out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was a great <laughs> intro. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome, man. Sorry, I had to put the personal fouls in there. That's kind of amazing. <laughs> but you like we you played so many games. That's really only like 2.95 fouls a game. So yeah. I don't remember. I don't know if did you ever foul out? I'm pretty sure I probably fouled out maybe one or two times. I'm sure I have. Yeah, that's like what a like one or two out of one thirty, right? Is pretty yeah, good. Yeah. Good to see you, Billy. Man, I I enjoyed talking with you over at the Swiss League this summer. It was a lot of fun, man. Last couple of years that you've been there, uh, it's been it's been fun watching you play and just talking to you about some of your stories of you know pro ball and everything. And it's been good to catch up with uh, old old time Aztecs like yourself. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, the Swiss is always good to play play there you know it's good competition you know get to play against the guys at San Diego State some of those guys get to play and you know I feel like you know like you said just going there and playing playing against some of the guys that I played with you know or you know seen play at San Diego State is just a great opportunity for everybody that's still playing basketball a good outlet for San Diego for sure for sure like I, I, I remember watching you when you guys you're one of my favorites because I, I felt like in that 11, 10, 11 team, you were you to me, you were the glue of that team, the kind of the heart of that team. Whenever there was a big game, you stepped up Gonzaga and then the three games, BYU um, and then in the in the, you know, the, the NCAA tournament games. So for me, it was kind of like I that's we kind of know what everybody else did on that squad, but like I just I was like without you, I don't know if we get to the Sweet Sixteen. To be man, I appreciate that. Yeah, man, I just feel like you know my goal was when I first stepped on campus. You know, my freshman year playing against, I mean, playing with Lorenzo, you know, Lorenzo Wade and Richie Williams, and um, you know, all those guys that that were there before me, you know, I was just, you know, just trying to bring energy and, you know, trying to do whatever it takes to get onto the floor. And, you know, thank thank God for Coach Fisher. You know, he always told me to, you know, be me, you know, just bring bring your attitude that you bring, you know, in a good way, you know, your high energy, you know, and, and everything will work out and you'll see a lot of playing time. So that's what I just try to do, you know, and just always try to make it fun for everybody, all the people, you know, that went to the games. So, like, you know, you guys paid you guys' hard-earned money to come see us play. You guys want to see a show. So, you know, that was my thing. You know, always try, try to play hard, especially at home, you know, because, you know, the crowds is rocking at home. It got better each year. I've seen it, you know, progress each year from freshman year all the way to senior year. So, you know, that was just my whole thing, just to play hard every time and try to get the crowd involved. The Vegas native bringing the showmanship for sure, man. Those years. You're right. I mean, seeing it from your freshman year, full circle to your senior year, it was just such a, a huge growth in the program and, and all those experiences. You know, one of the joys for us in doing these interviews is we get a chance to talk about your basketball journey, right? Your beginnings. I mean, let yeah. us let us know a little bit of, of where you come from, where you came from, your journey, your recruitment. How, how did you find San Diego State or who found you? Uh, I'm from originally I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada. You know, I'm born and raised there. Um, you know, um, I've been playing basketball since I was a little kid, you know, I played basketball and football, but, you know, once I started to get a little bit better at basketball, my mom didn't let me play football anymore. So I started to, you know, focus on basketball. Um, I went to, um, uh, Green Valley, you know, that was my high school. Um, you know, I felt like that's where it really started from there playing, you know, playing high school basketball there and also playing, getting on the AAU circuit. You know, the biggest thing for us, you know, um, I feel like being from Vegas, we have a, you know, chip on our shoulder just because, like, it's not a lot of people that made it out of Vegas into the NBA, not alone just to go to college. So it's very hard. You know, it's a lot of distractions coming from Vegas. 
So my goal was, you know, just to try to get a scholarship and, you know, try to expand my basketball, you know, uh, experience. So, um, you know, I just, you know, tried to play as, like I said, try to play as hard as I can. If, uh, you know, by the grace of God, I got a couple of scholarships. You know, um, I felt like my sophomore year, that's where it really started to take off for me in high school. You know, uh, having a great summer playing AAU ball, playing against the top guys in the country. You know, that's when I started to see, you know, little, um, my freshman year, I mean, my sophomore year, I got like a, a scholarship from um, like a D2 school. I forget what school it was, but it just opened my eyes to be like, wow, you know, this is possible that, you know, I can go to school for, you know, for basketball. Basketball can take me, you know, to, to go to college. So um, I started to take that really serious going into my junior year. And um, I had a great summer, I mean, a great year, junior year. And, um, you know, Coach Hutt from San Diego State started to come to, you know, some of my games just because I started to make, a you know, a lot of noise in my hometown, you know, playing in, like I said, playing on the AAU circuit, playing against the top guys, um, you know, so started to get a little bit more D1 scholarships. And Coach Hutt, I noticed Coach Hutt from San Diego State started to go to, like, almost all my games, you know, coming in, flying in, seeing how I am. He uh, introduced himself and you know, told me that he was going to keep an eye out on me. So um, when the time came down to, you know, to make the decisions, you know, I had by my senior year, I had, you know, some top, some D, some, you know, top 10 D1 schools. But the one thing that made me choose San Diego State was like when Coach Fisher came to, uh, you know, come recruit me, he came to my house to meet my mom. You know, he ate dinner with my mom. Um, I have a sister. I have a cousin that I'm really close with. We're close in age. Um, he's really good at uh, football, and he was making his transition to, you know, to go to school too. So he knew how important he was to me. So he sat down and talked to him. And um, like I said, man, it, San Diego just made me feel like it was home. Like it was like a brotherhood right away when Coach Fisher was talking to me, telling his, telling me him, oh, excuse me, telling me his story about the five, uh, the five, five days at Michigan. You know, so um, I just felt like, you know, I was going to be taken care of, you know, playing with Coach Fisher. You know, he didn't tell me things that I wanted to hear. He told me, you know, I was not going to be guaranteed to start. I was going to work from ground one, you know. So, like, I, I like that. I felt like all the other coaches around the country were telling me things that I wanted to hear. And, you know, when I got there, it might have not been what I wanted. He just, you know, never lied to me, just kept it straight told me how it was. So I felt like that was very, very easy for me to come to San Diego. Speaking of Coach Fisher, I, I know we, we talked to Winston. He had a little bit of a hiccup when he got to school. Yeah. Now you had a little bit of a hiccup too. And, and if you're comfortable talking about it, what what how, how did Fish handle that with you? Because I know Winston's like, hey, we got you. Just do what's right and, you know, be above reproach. Was yeah. he that same way with you? And, and how did he handle that? Um, He always, I mean, that's one thing that I loved about Coach Fisher, he treated us like like men, like young men. He didn't treat us like babies. You know, he didn't, you know, when it was time for us, when we messed up, you know, like I feel like, you know, some college kids, unfortunately, sometimes you have incidents in colleges that you mess up and you might get a second chance. And, you know, Coach always told us, like, you're not going to always get a second chance or a third chance. So you better think about what you did, you know, uh, take the, the, right, uh, the right route. You know, like, and um, I just always thanked him because he always treated us um, like young men, like we like we were supposed to. He didn't treat us like babies. He didn't treat us like kids. You know, he didn't talk down on us and make us feel bad. You know, he just told us exactly what it was. Like, you can't do this in the real life when you have, if you are fortunate to go to the NBA or, you know, playing overseas. Or if you don't, you know, decide to play basketball just in real life, just in the nine to five world, like you can't mess up like that, you know. So, like, he prepared us for life off the court. It wasn't just about basketball. He, like, we, his office was always open. We could talk to him about anything. You know, he was always preaching to us about stuff off the court, you know, just to keep a good attitude, treat people nice, and uh, go about your business the right way. I was going to say, I, I love hearing that. It definitely sounds like, obviously, that same mentality, that that same brotherhood, that practice is carried over, you know, with Coach Dutcher. And we were just talking about it before before you jumped on. I mean, hearing some of the words, he, the sound bites, they, 
came out today about coach Dutcher talking about whole the whole travel and, and, you know, the different conferences and just the landscape of, of college sports today. I mean, you know, what a clear communicator, you know, I had to make a point of that and yeah. definitely between him and Fisher. I mean, it, 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 there's no sweet talk. It's like, yeah, for sure. Straight up, straight up. When Dutch got the job, I knew that, you know, he was the right person, you know, mm-hmm. like we all seen it, that he was next up being for being with culture Fisher for so many years, you know, like, when we were there, my years at San Diego State, he was our, you know, offensive guy. You know, he was the guy that ran the plays, you know, and Coach Dutch, I mean, Coach uh, Hutt was our defensive guy. You know, he had the defensive plays, and Coach Fisher obviously was the head coach and put everything together. But, you know, that's, I knew when Dutch had his time, he was ready, and I knew he was going to be prepared. And, you know, he's doing his thing right now. I'm so proud of him because he's been there since day one. And, you know, like you just said, Dutch is a straight shooter. He ain't going to. He ain't going to bullshit you, tell you he's nothing wrong, you know what I'm saying? So he was always going to give it to you how it is, just like how Coach, Coach Fisher is. One of the big reasons for Aztec success over the year is, is player retention, you know, yes. and, and, and building a culture, a winning culture, and being able to get, you know, players to buy into a system, um, sometimes having to sacrifice, you know, individual for the good of the team generation to generation it's like you know uh, you 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 have a great experience and then that attracts other players and then it attracts another generation of players and you're seeing it now like with yeah. Matt Bradley and his speech after the final four you know and then um Reese Waters saying that that really inspired him to make that transition to San Diego State and it's 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 just really a a beautiful thing that we've built here at San Diego State and you're part of that early foundation, you know, with, with SDSU. And um, it, it's it's awesome to see how, you know, we've been able to carry this for 20-some years now you yes, know, between two coaches. Yeah. And, um, you know, you're, you're, you're a big piece of that. I appreciate it. Yeah, man, I just feel like, uh, you know, the whole sacrifice, I feel like we just, when I was going there, I can't really speak for the guys there. I feel like it looks like the same way. Like when I was going there, especially those last two years when we got Kawhi, like my junior year, when Kawhi came and Chase Tapley and all those guys came, I felt like we just wanted to have fun, man. You know, running up and down, you know, throwing lobs, you know. The biggest thing when you're that age, you just want to dunk, right, and get the crowd so and hype. So our thing was to play defense really hard you know, and try to run the floor and try to show our athletic, our, our, our athleticism and, uh, you know, try, try to get the crowd in and also play hard for each other. We knew how hard – I felt like the hardest times was in practice. Like, when it came to the games, it was so easy because we were so hard on each other in practice. We hold each other, you know, to a, to a high standard. We, you know, we have accountability on our team. That was the biggest thing, like accountability. You know, we lean on each other. Uh, make sure, you know, everybody's on the right page. And the number one thing is just to have fun, you know, just to always have fun. Try to, you know, no matter what type of game it is, just to always try to have fun and and, and just embrace the moment. I, I usually ask, okay, it, was there like a welcome to D1 moment that freshman year where you just like something happened or a particular story and it was like welcome to d1 like uh, okay just excuse me just i feel like just the first practice man like the first very first practice stepping onto campus going to like just going to class was just weird you know just going to class by yourself nobody you know telling you you got to get up and go to class you know you're not in high school anymore you're like you're independent you know you're on your own so that was just a mind like a mind changing for me and like the basketball side of it just like the first day of practice, like just seeing how fast guys were, like faster, stronger, you know, bigger, you know, just the the knowledge of the game, people, you know, like it's so much detail, you know, everything was, um, you can't, you can't do it, nothing on your time, you know, it's all, I feel like, like, it's like you're in a fishbowl again, like, you know, me coming, being a hot thing in, at, uh, in Vegas and then coming here. And you got to earn your stripes. Like, nobody knows you. You're just a freshman on campus trying to prove yourself. So I felt like that was like an eye changer being like me being athletic and going against another person that's my height, athletic, and maybe stronger than me. So I got to figure out, like, man, I got to get in the weight room. How can I stay on the floor? You know, so that was like a big 
big, big eye opener for me playing against, you know, playing with Tim, uh, Tim Shelton, like him coming in being like, he's a grown man coming in at a freshman. I didn't look, you know, I didn't look nothing like him. So <laughs> I seen how his body type was going into our freshman year. And I'm like, man, we're the same age. And he's telling me he'll like the things that he did over something like, man, I knew that I got to put some pounds on. I thought like, man, I'm going to be okay just because I'm quickening everybody. Nah, I was an eye opener. I'm like, man, I got to hit the weight, <laughs> hit the weight movement. If I'm going to hang with these guys, cause this is a grown man, right? Like these ain't, high school kids this this is people that's trying to get to the next level that's all you know trying they got dreams just like you do they're trying to get to the nba they're trying to get to the next level so that was a real eye opener for me going up against tim was that a lot of, a lot of what was going on in practice you and tim oh uh, yeah we we just always battled cuz we played the same position so like we always battled like i said like our practices was always just a lot of competition like it was a lot of a lot of competition, everybody trying to get better. You know, obviously you're gonna have a little scuffles here and there, not punches or nothing, but like, you know, people yeah. getting mad because we're 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 trying to battle. We're, you know, we're trying to get better. Especially coming in as a freshman, like you you really wanna play. You don't wanna sit the bench. You're like, what can I do to get on the floor? I don't care mm -hmm. if it's five minutes, ten minutes, two minutes, I gotta show Coach Fisher that I belong here, right? I don't want – like, my biggest fear of my freshman year, I've never told nobody this, but, like, my biggest fear was, like, I don't want to be redshirted. I don't want to have that conversation mm -hmm. that coach, you know, calls me in, like, hey, we love you, but we want to redshirt you because we don't think you, you're good enough. Like, we want you to, you know, get better at this and get better at that. So my whole mindset was, like, whatever it takes for me to get on the floor, that's what I got to do. Well, I mean, it worked out, man. You were the 0708 rookie. Right, the Mountain West Conference rookie. Yeah. <laughs> you did something right, you know? So that was, yeah, I mean, I kind of had a feeling. I, I feel like there's a lot of left-handers in the in the program. Yeah. Right, it started with Randy Holcomb. Yeah. And then you kind of came in, and now I think we had, like, three guys left-handers last year. Yeah. Which is, how did that how did that go against, because I'm, I'm assuming there's not a lot of left-handers, obviously, in high school, it's more right-handers. Yeah. Um, how, how did that, how do you think that benefited you as opposed to, you know, being right-handed like everybody else? Uh, I think it benefited me a lot because um, I feel like a lot of people always say, like, left-handers are so hard to guard just because, like, we can always, like, we, we're just a lot, like, we're shifty, especially me being athletic. Like, I can, sh I can shoot going left. I can shoot going right. And, like, it's very difficult for like people to try to guard that just because they don't know what I can do going like just do, being left-handed I don't know if that makes sense but <laughs> yeah um, it's just it just gives me advantage just because I'm just so I'm just so used to you know uh people thinking automatically when they first match up with me um, uh that I'm right-handed so they just shade me to the right so I'm like okay I can go right hand, but I'm going to get back to my left. Or like when they try to take away my left, I just go right and get back to my left. I feel like it's very just like, just like a God-given talent, I guess. I can't really explain it. <laughs> it's almost like you get a freebie the first one before they yeah. figure it out, right? Yeah. That's like a free bucket. I, I kind of want to talk about the 10-11 season, if, we're, if we could jump right to that, if you're okay yeah. with that. That Gonzaga game, Gonzaga, whatever you want to call it. I mean, I remember I was the Aventine in La Jolla on a date out on the patio. <laughs> the game was on, and I was like, I was kind of, I was 100% into the game and not really into the date. And then you, you, dude, you went, you went nuts that game, man. Like what, like 30 points in 32 minutes with nine boards. That's when I was like, oh shit, this team could be something that we've never seen at San Diego State before. Yeah. And I feel like in the biggest games, you played your biggest ball. Yeah. And what 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 was the mentality going into I, I guess that season, that game, knowing Gonzaga is Gonzaga is Gonzaga. It's, I don't know if it was necessarily what it was as they are now, but what was the mindset? What was the team? What was your mindset going in that game of like, hey, this this obviously is a statement game. And then you go out and you got you do what you do 14 of 18 yeah I mean, that's, that's that's crazy man like when did you know shit, this is my game 
Well, um, going into that season, um, just going to that game and going to that season, coming off our junior year and uh, just getting a taste of going to the NCAA final. I mean, excuse me, to going to NCAA tournament and playing against Tennessee and losing to them. Right, we had a sour taste in our mouth. Like, what can we do? You know, better. You know, that was our. We liked the taste of you know getting to the NCAA tournament, but like. We want to win a game, right? Like mm-hmm. not get there. Let's like make some noise. So that whole summer, we found out, you know, that damn near our whole team is coming back. Like we only had like I think one or two seniors on that when I was a uh, junior, that junior team. I mean, I think yeah, I feel like it was maybe like one or two people on that team that was like seniors. So like we had our whole team coming back. Nobody declared to go to the NBA. So. Kawhi wanted to come back for his sophomore year, Chase and all all those all those guys. You know, I decided to come back. DJ decided to come back. So like I said, our whole starting five and like basically our whole team decided to come back. So we felt like we had a chip on our shoulder. We're like we was like we had goals. We we're like we wanted to win the Mountain West turn on um, Mountain West. We want to get to the tournament. Not just get to the tournament, we want to win a game. You know, so that game going into Gonzaga. We were really pissed off because we we wasn't even supposed to play them. We wanted, I think, we were supposed to play Duke at Duke, but Duke declined us, so we ended up having to play Gonzaga. Like it was like a last minute game, so like we were already pissed off. Like you know, thinking that we were going to play Duke and not getting the news that we, uh, not playing them. So going to the, going into that game, we we're like, whoever we going to play, let's just you know crush them. Let's do our thing. Let's, this is the time that to show everybody that San Diego State is nothing to mess with. And, you know, we can hang with the big big schools on national television. They're not going to beat us. We don't care who we play, where they're at. We'll go to them. So if we had that mindset, and I feel like once I knew it was my night was when, like, I felt like uh, Malcolm Thomas got – I want to say fouled out the game. Like he was having foul trouble the whole time. And um, he was having a really rough game. And it something just clicked to me because he played in that conference before playing against Gonzaga, transferring from Pepperdine. And look, they had, there was, the crowd was saying some really disrespectful stuff and I didn't like it, you know, and he really couldn't play. So I was basically playing for him. So that's where really lit the fire. I'm like, you know, once I started, taking my shots and they were all going in. Coach Fisher was like, hey, we're going to go through you. You know, uh, you're the hot hand right now. Let's just run the offense through you. So I just, it was just one of those games that, you know, that I got hot and by the grace of God of Coach Fisher, just let me do my thing. Not a lot of inside out either. There they go inside. Reverse from White with the foul. Billy White, another impressive move. And he is destroying the Bulldogs down low. He's got 21. Billy White at the free throw line of the timeout, and he does not get the free throw to go, but a tap play, and Tapley saves it. White shoots the three. He's got it. Billy White silencing the crowd in Spokane over the last several years. Then Gonzaga, 77 and four, their last 81 at home. Great pass, Leonard. White down low. He's got 30, and the Aztecs lead by five. What a game, man. That was like why wow, that was like I don't know. I mean, I'm sure you the the other guys here saw that, but I was like, oh shit, we got something here. There's something yeah. here, you know. And, and I feel like after that game, we all knew came back into that lo- 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 that locker room was like, man, we're gonna have a a great year. Like if we keep this up, I think we can do something special. We just took it one game at a time, man. After that game, it's just like, what's next? Let's practice hard. Let's go back to the drawing board. Let's watch tape. That was another thing. Like, we watched a lot, a lot of tape, man. Every day, tape, tape, tape. No matter when, lose, watch tape. What can we do better? What can we do better? What can we do better? We was never satisfied with anything. One game at a time, Fiend. Next man up, right? Yep. That's kind of my motto is, like, hey, just worry about the next game. You can't worry about anything past that. You know, it's just – and I'm sure the coaches are like that. Like, hey, you can't worry about anything. I'm always a big believer of, hey, you know what, the the thing with – with problems is they're still going to be there tomorrow. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So to worry about that tomorrow, but Gonzaga was 11th and you know, they, they, I mean, to, to beat them and, 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 and then you just got steamrolled steamrolled. Yeah. 
Yeah. Until you met Jimmer. <laughs> so that was like, yeah. I, I mean, that dude was. I mean, that that was one of the greatest seasons ever. Obviously, you guys saw it up front. What what was that like playing him? What was he like? What was the kind of the interactions with him? Because obviously, two of the three losses were that, and then you got your revenge in the Mountain West title game where you you balled out. Um, it was always fun playing against him. Like he's a great guy, great guy off the court. You know, never really talked any smack. So. I can't say nothing really bad about him off, uh, you know, on the court talking smack wise, but like his game, he just let his game speak for itself. He was one of those type of guys, man, you know, really good uh, team sport guy, hard to stop, you know, that BYU team. It wasn't just him. Like they had a really good team. Like a lot of people just talk about him, but their team was just really good, man. A solid team. And um, they just, they, they kind of like play like us. They knew exactly what they wanted. They knew Jimmy was, you know, the face of the team was going to get a lot of shots. Everybody else was like, let's, let's just do our job. And, you know, he's going to do his job. Let's, let's do our job. So every time we played against him, like you said, the first two times we lost to him, they were just, I felt like we just had some great battles with him. Um, we just couldn't stop Jimmer, man. He was just a guy, a, a great shooter, a great college player. Coming off three or four uh, picks, it's hard to stop that. You know, um, coming. You know, he's a great shooter. He can shoot it. Coming one or two dribbles off of half court, letting it letting it go. So um, it was just like you said, a great experience playing against him. I felt like every time we played against him, we learned something. You know, we got better as a team. Felt like that, like you said, that third time in our Mountain West tournament. Felt like. Um, you know, we all looked at each other and was like, man, we can't let him beat us three times, man. Like three times, <laughs> we all, <laughs> you know, we got to do something different. I feel like that third time we played against him, I've, I've guarded him more. Like the first two times I guarded him, but when they would do uh, picks, we'll usually switch it. So that third time, I didn't switch any picks. I usually got through all the screens. So I felt like that was a bigger part reason why we won because we had a little bit more length on them. Or when we did switch on them, we switched with our five man and had like a big man on them instead of switching with a guard. So um, I felt like that was like the biggest key getting big guard. I mean, getting big people on them and stopping him from like doing what he wants to do. So that was like you said, man, that was fun. I feel like it was always fun playing against BYU. Were those your uh, probably most, memorable games the Gonzaga matchups BYU matchups or, or was there another game that maybe stands out to you that maybe people don't really really think of um man our conference back in the day was always a hard like every night was you know a good night but I feel like you know one of my memorable games always is like playing against UNLV right you know being from Las Vegas playing against them beating them all beating them most of the time, I feel like maybe I lost them maybe one or two times in my career, but most of the time beat them. So, you know, their atmosphere at their at their stadium and also when they come here uh, to play us. So, you know, those games are always exciting to play. Did they recruit you at all coming from uh, Vegas? Kind of, but a little bit. Um, I went to one of their, like, open gyms and I played, played like, with some of their players. And um, they told my high school coach that they didn't like my style of play, so that stuck with me when I went to San Diego State. That you know, I was like, yeah. okay, because my dream was to go to—I mean, not go go to UNLV, not San Diego State. I wanted to stay home, you know, just being a Las Vegas kid. I just that's—I just felt like that was like the best play for me, best place uh -huh. for me, you know, uh, just to see, uh, let my my family see me play. So um, that was the one place I really wanted to play uh, coming out of uh, high school. But once I saw San Diego State and felt like San I saw San Diego State was in the same conference, I'm like, oh, yeah, this is this is going to be good. <laughs> I was always curious about that. I was going to say, like, you know, back in the day, I mean, you know, when you go back 15 years, 20 years, I mean, UNLV had the pedigree. San Diego State did not, you know, yeah. and so – Naturally, I could see how someone from Las Vegas would want to stay home and play for UNLV just because, yeah. you know, they've won national title. They've been to Final Fours. Um, San Diego State at that point, I mean, you know, it was just starting the build under Steve Fisher, you know, and you were a part of that building block and, 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 and really 
building the foundation of the program moving forward. A lot has changed since then. Um, you know, obviously I think the programs have kind of gone in two different directions. Yeah. Um, but at the time, yeah, UNLV was probably the pre one of the premier programs on the West Coast. Yeah. And so uh we <laughs> we appreciate you coming to San Diego <laughs> State and helping us helping us build this thing here. And another big part of me coming to San Diego State too is uh Lorenzo Way. You know, he's a Las Vegas native too as well. And you know, um my older cousin, he played basketball with uh, with Lorenzo back in high school when Lorenzo was playing basketball at, uh, in Las Vegas. So that was like a huge part of me coming to San Diego State, you know, him transferring from Louisville to there, playing with Coach Fisher, telling me the stories about Coach Fisher and just the culture there. So that was a, a huge part for me to, you know, see, a, you know, a Vegas guy, you know, do good over there. All right, one thing Jamal hinted to when we interviewed him, he was talking about the shoes, all about the shoes. I mean, when you, when you look at the Aztecs uniforms nowadays compared to, you know, I mean, you look at the photos and the videos of you guys back in the days. Come on, man. The shorts are like super long, super yeah. baggy. You, you guys were still rocking all the J's. But I mean, what, when you look at the, the unis compared to back in your days, I mean, what, what do you think about them now? I feel like they got way better uniforms than us. <laughs> They got different colors. I mean, they got blue uniforms now and all this other <laughs> stuff, which is good, man. I'm happy for them. You know? I'm really happy for them. But, um, yeah, when I was going, you know, when we were playing, we just had two sets of uniforms, maybe three. We had some red ones, I think, of that we wore here and there. But, um, yeah, the shoes, man, uh, I think that was the one of the best things, you know, going to San Diego State, you know, playing, getting the, you know, retro Jordans, you know, and they're matching our color, you know, matching the uniforms. We don't have to, you know, get them custom made or do no Nike ID stuff. So, um, you know, we can just go to straight to Foot Locker, buy them and, and wear them on the court. Or, uh, you know, uh, sometimes, you know, they blessed us with some shoes, you know, gave us some team shoes. And sometimes they'd have been Jordans and they let us wear them. You know, sometimes uh, I think back then we were Nike, so they gave us a lot of Nikes, but we wanted to rock Jordans. You know, once we saw like the older kids like Brandon Heath and like I said, Lorenzo and all those guys started to wear Jordans, we were like, OK, we're going to wear them, too. We, we might have overdid it a little bit, though. <laughs> nah, not with those, man. That was fire. I remember I remember guys would change you, uh, shoes at halftime. Yeah, yeah, right? for sure. And that was that kind of like you were like, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna come out with this tonight. And then was it just we're gonna change or what was the mindset changing shoes? It's just like, hey, I want to. Uh, if you had a bad yeah. game, maybe if you wanted to wear them or rock them. The crazy thing is, me, me, Kawhi, and I think Chase all wore the same size shoe. Like we all wore 13, so we all just like shared shoes all the time. So if somebody got a pair, we all was like, all right. You know, got to get those. He already got them. We'll get another pair. We just all just like switch like that. So that was like one of the best things. And, you know, I didn't have to spend all my money buying all the J's. Like I'll be like, oh, Kawhi bought some, Chase bought some. I'm just going to go in their closet and take some of their stuff. <laughs> what was your what was your favorite shoe to, to play in? Um, The 14s I liked, like the Ferrari 14s are so like all black with a little bit of red. Um. I like the patent leather, um, the 11s. I felt like the Space Gems just came out when uh, when we were playing, so we rocked those a lot. Um, believe it or not, I like the ones, mm. the Jordan ones. I've uh, played in those. Are, those are really comfortable, but I feel like the 11s and the 14s are like one of my two favorite ones to play in back in the day. Nice. All right, Billy. Just for for the, for the sake of our curiosity, take us back to those years a little bit more, man. I mean, were you driving back then? What were you What were you cruising around? How were you getting around campus back in those days? Honest, I was walking, man. I mean, I was I was a walker, <laughs> man. I mean, I drove. Don't get me wrong. I drove my teammates' car here and there. I didn't have a car. In, in, yeah, in college. yeah. So uh, you know, if, when my teammates let me drive, I was I was driving their car. But usually, I was on campus, man. You know, I was. Um, you know, talking to students, chilling with people on campus. I wasn't, you know, too big time. You know, I lived damn near all four years I lived on campus. Like, I didn't stay off campus my senior year. Um, so um, 
I was just a campus, you know, a campus guy, just always on campus, you know, talking to people, chilling with my friends, doing uh, college kid stuff. <laughs> go, go, going to True Heels, you know. One of my favorite places. <laughs> I, 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 I have to eat there at least once a week, man. <laughs> at least. What were you listening to back in those days? I mean, man, I, we're talking about back in those days, like, geez, but I mean, you know, time goes by fast. What, you remember what you were bumping to get you hyped up for the game? Lil Wayne, man. <laughs> Lil Wayne. <laughs> Lil Wayne. For sure, Lil Wayne. I feel like Wiz Khalifa, when he, that's when he first got onto the scene. I feel like Currency a little bit. Big Sean, when he first got on. But mostly Lil Wayne. What what what's your guilty pleasure music? <laughs> guilty pleasure music. <laughs> like 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 I'll I'll be honest. I'll throw it out there, dude. In Sync just came out with a new song for the new Trolls movie, and I can't stop listening to it. I think it's great. Dude. You said In Sync? Yeah, In Sync. I love that shit, dude. Like I like it's it's like I feel like Backstreet Boys had better slow jams, love songs, but In Sync had better dance videos and dance music. But if you listen to the new one, and I have a five year old, so I listen to all the, you know, the. Oh, trolls. you got to, yeah. Yeah. So like, <laughs> like I'm dancing with her, but it, it, like, it's just, I just, I love it, man. Like, if you get a chance to listen to it, it's, it's incredible. But what was your, what's your guilty pleasure of like, oh man, I don't know if I want to say this, but this is what I like. Anything? Or you still want to say it? No, I was say, I, I'm on, I, I kind of like R and B. Like okay. I used to listen in sync when they were popping back in the day, like in high school. I, yeah. you know, I was if I had to choose over Instinct and Battery Boys, I would choose Instinct over Battery Boys any day. Okay, I mean they have JT, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah, I yeah I listened to him. I, I when, <laughs> when he went solo, I bought a couple of his albums. Like like dude, I've been to nine of his concerts. <laughs> he, he's a great performer. I've like, never been like to his Michael concerts, Jackson. concerts, but I've seen him like on Instagram and stuff, and he's a great performer. For he's sure. like our Michael Jackson. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like just, for sure. He puts on a show. So yeah, man. I don't, you know, I just I'm just I was always curious about that. And like, you know, with you guys, I remember I was I was working out with somebody that used to work out with you guys and we were listening to the to Backstreet Boys while we were working out. <laughs> and I think one of the cats came in from the team, like, what the fuck are you guys listening to? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, and we looked at each other like it's it's I want it that way by Backstreet Boys, dude. <laughs> we're grinding. It was That's a good a classic though. Dude, like that's top five. For that's me. a classic. Yeah, you should know that. If everybody should know, come on, man. Like, that's a yeah. classic. It might have been Jamal. It might have been Jamal that looked at us like, "What's wrong with you guys?" You know what I mean? <laughs> Dude, you know how it. Come on, man. You can admit it. It's all right. <laughs> you know that the show sings that song at the end of basketball games. It's kind that's of like a, a tradition. It's a thing. <laughs> I mean, it's an all timer, dude. It's an all timer. <laughs> so, so we're we're trying to figure out where we're gonna go for a road trip. If in in conference. If you had to pick a place to go as like a roadie, wh wh where would you suggest we might go? In the conference? Yeah. Well, we got three options, kind of. We kind of have three op options, right? Let's see. Let's see what he says. Let's see what he says. Because we have. I ain't going to lie. Who's it? I know our conference changed, right? So, <laughs> God, God. It's pretty much the same. It's pretty much yeah, the same. Yeah, there's no, there's no Utah. There's no TCU. Yeah. Add in like, Boise. Boise State no. is in there, right? Boise yeah. State. I've never yeah. been there. I was like, I feel like that would be a good time. I don't know why. That was just after you, right? That yeah. was just after you. Boise that was State just after me. Came in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How How do you feel about New Mexico? New Mexico is cool. I like New Mexico. Did you have I, I, every time I've talked to people who've gone there or some of the guys who played there, they're like ruckus, man, just like shit fans. Yeah, I. They've never been rude to me, honestly, personally. Like they always been pretty cool to me but i'm obviously the fans i've not they're really rowdy but so like i've always loved playing against new mexico like going there i loved it playing in the pit is like one of my favorites okay yeah we're trying to figure that out man i think i think that might have be you guys been to new mexico before i haven't like to the game mm -mm. that's kind of the option we're looking at is like uh new mexico boise or colorado state Oh, Colorado State's pretty dope too. I think that New Mexico game is going to be dope because they usually pack pack that pack that pit the, like the place out. I like the gym too, like how it's like uh, it's like a real pit. Like you guys got to go there. It, it, you guys are going to enjoy it if you guys go. New Mexico might be the spot, man. It's yeah. fifteen thousand fans there. Plus, you got the number one, number two preseason 
Mountain West teams. Plus, you got the whole factor of Butler hitting the, the game winner last year on their court. So they want revenge. And so, yeah, it's going to be a very, very difficult place to play. And um, those crowds are the, the crowd's going to be rowdy. Yeah. Mm. Billy, I know you're all over the place, man, since since your time at state has ended. I mean, you're you're all over Europe. You're all over Americas. But I mean, uh, you're a San Diegan. So tell me how how in tune are you watching this basketball team? I mean, I, I'm kind of kicking myself. Were you in Houston last year? I don't know. No, I was not. I was in season. Okay. I was trying, okay. like my, I was trying to get home. My coach was like, we we had like a a week break, I believe, during that time, and I was trying to get home, but like the tickets was just so expensive, man. So I'm sure it wasn't yeah. enough time for me to like really get there, do like see the game, and get back in time and practice with my team. So I was I watched it faithfully on TV, man. Your I was team. just very proud how. It, they played, man. You know, you know, a lot of people didn't think we were going to get there, you know. So, you know, I'm just happy that the guys, you know, fought hard. You know, it wasn't a blowout, nothing like that. They didn't roll over. They showed the world that, you know, we can play with the big dogs. You know, we're not like a men major. You know, we're a real D1 school that can, you know, play with the best. Yeah, we were uh, we were definitely out there in Houston, man. And uh, just to see so many guys throughout the years out there and i was like kicking myself because i, I kind of slept in i forgot about one of the big events where everybody was out there and i was like oh, no. <laughs> like where i'm late uh but uh just an amazing time man i mean do you get to watch any any or or, or do you have any opinions on the, on the team moving forward I, I don't know how much you get to really um even... i just feel like man um i just feel like we gotta get better at recruit just recruiting higher like a you know five star players you know I feel like we have a San Diego is a beautiful place. We have a great campus. I feel like they're doing a great job. Don't get me wrong of like what they're doing now, but I feel like for us to get to the like the next next top, we got to get like a five star, you know, like a McDonald All American type of player, you know, to try to build around that. I tried to open it up to some some fans if they wanted to ask you a question, and somebody pointed out, you know, when we talk about Swish League, that's something that that you've been a part of, like consistently so it's been really cool to see you play obviously miles bird uh redshirt freshman last year for the aztecs is that something that you were aware of and and were able to go against him and see um, i know you were you were getting you get whatever you want in swish league man you're raining out buckets so it's kind of like you're just there <laughs> play, playing your game so i don't, I don't really no, know miles actually was on my team he was actually okay. on my team this year um i didn't know that he was a redshirt freshman i mean a redshirted last year um, like coming in playing with me till like after the whole season, and I got to like really chop it up and talk to him and hang out with him. Um, that's a really good kid. You know, sky's the limit. He can really play basketball. I feel like um this year if he gets a good opportunity, um, he's gonna do his thing. That's a good um a, a person that everybody else um in San Diego should look out for this coming season. I think he's gonna have a a great year. Um, he's athletic. He can shoot the ball. Um, his talent is out this roof. I feel like um, if he gets a you know a, a full year underneath his belt, sky's the limit for that kid. Did you get a chance to play against any of the other guys like uh, Elijah or Reese Waters? Any of the other guys? In no, I didn't. I didn't get to play against any of them. I went to uh, the practice like two, I want to say two or three weeks ago, just to pop my head in and, and see the guys practice. And they were getting out for it, man. I, I know for a fact, you know, they're not satisfied from last year. You know, they're ready, you know, to get back running and put on the show for everybody in San Diego and let the people know that, you know, they, they want to get back and, uh, you know, actually, you know, win, a, win something for us and bring something back to the city. So tell us a little bit about where you're at now, man, because, you know, Billy, I hear I hear, you know, reports Aztec Nation is growing and some people, you know, they, they love to put hey, a Billy sighting over here at, at this gym or over here at this gym. I mean, man, you're playing around like you're, you're around town, you know, where the game's at. Oh, man, I'm just trying to stay fresh for my upcoming season. I don't know where I'm assigned at yet. Um, um, I'm still deciding where I want to go, but I'm just trying to stay fresh and, you know, I was trying to. Uh, stay in shape for this upcoming season so wherever I can get in and play at you know I'm not one of those guys that you know just try to 
practice at one place. You know, if there's good basketball all around San Diego, I'm gonna go. You know, I'm gonna pop my face in and you know try to play and get some get some reps in. You know, I love the game of basketball. You know, so um, it, every time I play, it makes me happy and I enjoy it. So anytime I can get some good run around San Diego, you know, that's what I can do. So tell us a little bit about your journey, like, you know, in, in professional basketball. Like, how how did you transition from San Diego State to the pros? Like, what was that journey like? You know, just tell us about kind of that experience. Yeah, so I obviously ended my uh, career in 2011 and I uh, went to the put my uh, name into the NBA draft, um, the 2000, uh, NBA, yeah, 2011 NBA draft, but it was a, a lockout year that year. So that kind of messed up things for me. You know, um, even though we had, uh, you know, a great run, a uh, college run that year, um, it kind of still messed up, you know, my draft stock just because I didn't get a lot of workouts just because they, like I said, they had a NBA lockout, so they didn't know what was going to, you know, be happening. So that kind of messed up everything. So unfortunately, I didn't get drafted, but I got signed to the Miami Heat. I played for them for like half of the year, then then got sent down to the D League and played there for most of the year. And then the next following year, I went overseas and played in Greece and played a full year over there and then came back home and played, uh, I want to say, a year in Mexico. And uh, the next year following after that, I played uh two years in Israel and then I played um came back home and then for the summer and then played uh my last four or five years I've been playing in Canada. So um I feel like Canada's been kinda home to me. You know, been spending my last couple of years playing basketball out there. So it's been a journey just playing, you know, seeing the world playing, you know, basketball, seeing how different countries play basketball and how they're, you know, how they approach the game. And it's just been fun. You know, it's been an amazing journey. Is there any, any stop, you know, within your pro career that was your favorite or, you know, place that you loved the most? Yeah. Um, Israel. I liked Israel a lot of the, the basketball was really, um, like up and down. It reminded me of like college style, just like a lot of up and down, fast pace. Um, the people there were amazing. Um, the food was good. Um, my living situation was amazing. So um, not to say not everywhere else hasn't been like that, but like that, it just reminded me of San Diego. Like the, the, the beaches, uh, it was nice. Um the 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 people around the area were really nice and, and you know just welcoming um you know everything was just you know just nice i just enjoyed my my time there yeah winston loved it out there too he said it's, he said very similar things tough to see what's going on out there right now man it's yeah wild. man it's really tough i'm i'm sad to see it. you know i i i got a couple of friends that uh, you know that i'm still cool with when i played out there Mm -hmm. um, they're still living out there and you know so prayers and thoughts to everybody out there you know all, all the stuff that's going out there it, it sucks right now so like do you, do you have an idea of like how much longer you want to play pro ball or like how long your career is going to be um by the grace of god i've never had any injuries so um i'm you know i've never had no surgeries on my body so um I feel like I I got two or, I want to say three more three or four more good years in me and then I'll call them when I retire and you know maybe do something else. Um, I, I kind of don't want to coach. I feel like everybody says, you know, when they're done playing basketball, they don't want to coach. I still want to be around the game. I kind of want to you know work out kids, do, being like a person, not a personal trainer, but like maybe, you know, I guess kind of a kind of. Uh, I guess a personal trainer, but like I want to be on a, like a coaching staff with somebody, maybe just like maybe high school or college, but just working people out and getting their games right. Your career, you played all over. You've had amazing experiences. Like part of that coaching is sharing those experiences with the, the younger generation. Right. So, I mean, yeah. is there any bit of advice or just some kind of a, you know, something you could, you could leave, you know, maybe some young ballers that are watching right now, you know, as far as your path and your journey to, that, that they could use. Yeah, for sure. Um, 
just to, you know, if stay, stay uh, focused on your goal, you know, don't never let nobody deter you from your goal. Don't let nobody tell you you can't do nothing, you know, try to have a great work ethic. Um, you know, for me, I know sometimes, you know, I, uh, I know sometimes will what hurt me in my career sometimes if uh, my attitude feel like you guys uh, feel like you got to have a good attitude. You know, um, I got sent home before from a job because of having a bad attitude just to be real. And, you know, uh, that's just tar- like being a grown man and, and being responsible. You know, uh, I, w- I got sent home when I was young. I want to say like my third or fourth job playing basketball overseas and, you know, not being ready and not being accountable, you know, going over there and not taking my job serious. And um, just because, you know, you're not always going to get what you want playing basketball overseas, you know, like you're going to have some, you know, some bad coaches that might not like you because you're American, right? Or whatever the case is, you're going to have to fight through that. It's a job. Like at the end of the day, they they pay you to do what you love. So you got to, you know, put that aside and do your job. And, you know, um, sometimes a lot of, I feel like these young kids, they got to do their research on where they're going. Cause you know, sometimes um, playing basketball overseas is very tricky. You know, sometimes these teams don't have the money for you and they fold or, you know, they might do some, you know, some trickery stuff to you. So you got to always be prepared for the worst and, you know, uh for the good too as well and just stay focused you know like i always say uh, just to try to keep a, a a clear mind a clear head and uh don't let nobody you know to tear you from your goals hmm. That's like, like, i got we, we, we've we had a few guys on the on the pod and you know i've talked to guys off pod and stuff like i just feel like everybody who comes to the program is just a high quality individual you know, just like just listen to you guys talk and your mentality and, and how you, you work through stuff. I'm sure, you know, fish, you have a foundation for that and people bring out certain things in you, whether good or bad. And I feel like when when you guys get here at state, a lot more good has come out with you guys and working through processes with fish and Dutch kind of like you said, treating you like like grown men. Yeah. You can't, hey man, you can't do that shit. And here's what's yeah. going to happen. You know, here's what's this and that. And so, like, I just I look at the NIL thing, and we've had discussions on that here. I just feel like there's a culture here at San Diego State that is a it is a, is a it, it, it's our culture. And if you know it, you know it. And if you don't, you don't. And I feel like they kind of recruit to those kind of individuals, personality wise, as well as basketball. And I feel like when you all come, you're obviously good at what you do. Yeah. Just looking at stuff, I, I get I, I get the impression you're still great at basketball, but, but you come out better human beings and more mature than, you know, you're still in college. Like you guys go yeah. through college, but yeah, you're more sure. magnified. Like I did shit in college, man, but I don't, I wasn't on a basketball team and I wasn't, yeah. the, 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 you know, articles written about it. Yeah. But like that's that's kind of what I look about is like the NIL is the NIL. San Diego State guys, there's NIL guys, and not always they kind of overlap. And the chemistry thing, you know what I mean? The chemistry on the teams has always been, I've always enjoyed. There's maybe one team here or there that just didn't have the chemistry, but like you, you just, there's a continuation of chemistry. And that, I think that starts with the coaching staff being together for 25 years. Yeah. You know, and also, I, I feel like, man, we love being around each other. Like I, I can, like I said once again, I can't speak for the guys that play for the team now, but when I was going to San Diego State, like when we would go to parties, it's all of us. It's not just one person. Yeah, we would all roll together. If it's partying or even just you know hanging out, chilling, playing video games, we had that team bonding. We always had each other's back. Like I said, it was accountability. That was our number one thing from coaching staff, even the coaching staff, like. The coaches would go hang out together. When they were on the road trips, everybody's chilling in the room playing PlayStation. You'll see coaches downstairs. They might be game game planning for, you know, for the game or whatever the case is, but they're downstairs with each other, coaching, being next to each other, might have, you know, talking about life or whatever the case is. But everybody's like it's like a real like I say, like a real brotherhood. We all care for each other. Goes down from the coaching staff all the way down to the players. It's a real testament to the culture because, you know, when we brought Jamal Franklin on the show, he said the exact same thing. 
that culture persists today. I mean, those those kids love hanging out with each other. They're you know they 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 want to be around uh, each other, and that helps them grow as a team. It helps them grow as a brotherhood, and, and honestly, it helps them win games. You know, and For so sure. it goes a long way. See. It goes a long way because you you know what you're you know. When it comes down to the game and comes down to the, you know, to the nitty gritty, you know what your brother is going to do. You know, you know what what he's how he's going to react, how to talk to each other. You know, when times are down, you know, when the, when it's bad times or we're down a lot, we know how to, you know, come back because we've been around each other. We, we, you know, we know what buttons to push on each other, if that makes sense. So. Mm -hmm. I can see it in these guys now. I feel like that was a big part of them going all the way to the uh, going to the finals, right? Is they they love actually playing with each other. You can see it on you know the guy's face that you know they're happy. They're not mad when if one person goes off. Like they're actually truly happy. You know somebody did good and they're embracing each other. So I feel like that's going to go a long way. All right, you calling your shot? How far is this ASIC team going to go this year, man? National championship or 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 I feel what? like we can, man. I feel like last year, man, like I said, man, a lot, we shocked the whole world last year. I feel like, man, um, if we keep doing what we're doing, why not, man? Why can we not get back there? We're always going to be a good defensive team. I feel like that's not going to be a question. You know, I feel like a lot of people had questions about our offense. I feel like we're going to take care of that this year. And, and we're going we're gonna to have it rocking. You know what they say, Billy. Just focus on Cal State Fullerton. Yeah, huh? <laughs> well, we're right? the best team in California, period. No, yeah. no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, 100%. But uh, it's like, I, I, I don't know. Like, I'm always, you know, I'm from San Diego, man. So San Diego sports has always, you know, been like San Diego sports. But, like, you know, watching you guys and kind of breaking the mold to to, to firing off, us off to national recognition and then this happening, I mean, it's it's been it's been a pretty cool thing to be around um, cause I moved up to, to Reno four or five years ago and I still kept my tickets. Okay. That's so dope, I, I go down to as many games as I can. I'm, I'm kind of right behind the visitors bench. So, um, but I just, I, 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 I just love, there's nothing like that arena when it's right. I remember when, when BYU came in 10, 11 here on that CBS on a Saturday afternoon, it was raining and it was, it was nothing like I've ever seen. Yeah, that, that was crazy. I think that was when people were camping out, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was crazy, dude. Like, yeah. So it's it's kind of it's almost like it's like a rock concert, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it just there's just when the team gets going and 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 all the you know the, the the welcome to the jungle plays when you guys come out and flags and you know like coach coach fish used to say tradition never graduates, man. Yeah. You know? um, I feel like it's just gonna get better and better, man. Like I said, like. Each year, man, they're doing they're doing such a major job, you know, with the team and just especially with the campus. Like I've I haven't been on campus in so long and I've walked on campus the other day and just walked literally around campus and seen how much it's changed and like all the new buildings and like all the stuff they put on it, man. I'm just I'm just happy, man. Just to see, you know, when I went there and how it is right now, I feel like it's gonna be amazing. Like there's just gonna, it's just gonna keep getting better and better. Yeah, yeah. Billy, you're a huge part of those teams, huge part of this program's growth and success, man. I, I got to tell you, me and my brother went out that that 10, 11 year, drove out there to Arizona to see you guys beat Temple, and, and get us to the Sweet 16. We were there watching that game as well, and and of course my my brother he, he had to tell me he was like, man, I went out to that Las Vegas game, the road game. And as he was leaving, walking the strip, Vegas fans were yelling at him, you know, San Diego State sucks or whatever, you know. <laughs> you know, a lot of that can be attributed to you deciding to come to San Diego State and not UNLV. We appreciate oh, it. Oh, boy, yeah. Like, <laughs> some Vegas people don't like that. <laughs> they don't if like that. If there's something you could tell Aztec Nation, all the Aztec fans, you know, a lot of those college kids, they're, they're – you know, right with you in, the, in in as far as age goes, and now they're they're watching this, and you know they they've grown to see you through those years, and now at, at, at this stage, you know what what can you say to Aztec Nation? Man, I just want to say thank you, man. I appreciate all the times, you know, all my good times at San Diego State. I appreciate you guys coming and packing, 
you know, the uh, VA, VA Haas Arena out all the time. You know, I, you know, you guys made it fun for me as much as I made it fun for uh, fun for you guys. So I just want to say thank you for all the support, and I appreciate you guys still supporting me to this day. And it's good to hear from you guys. Awesome, man. Well, maybe not, maybe not Coach Billy White, but you know, we'll have to keep in touch to see what, what the next step is in the journey of Billy White. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Stay tuned for sure. <laughs> yeah, good luck to you, man. I hope you get signed soon and, you know, have a great opportunity this year. Thank you. I appreciate Whatever it. it is. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, man. Thank you for coming on. We really appreciate you. Oh, man. Thank you for having me, man. I hope you guys have a great night. A great night. Yeah, you too. Thanks for coming on, man. Good luck. Everyone. All right. Aztec for life. Uh, appreciate it. Go Aztecs. <laughs> Thank you so much. Really good, man. I don't. Did I cuss? Maybe once? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah, but so did he. Yeah, he started it. <laughs> we'll just bleep you out. Yeah. We'll make it Harper friendly. <laughs> he was, did you hear it pounding at the door? I did. Oh. Yeah. I was like, like, Daddy, I'm crying. I'm crying. She's a savage. <laughs> but that was funny, dude. But yeah, Billy, I mean, he's just like that under the radar, legit dude who was always solid in big games, man. I, yeah, I wanted to know what he ate before the game, but... He said it was more of like a personal thing because they were going after Malcolm and he took it personally and that's, you know, he was just feeling it that night. Man, I just I just love that dude. Like, he's one of my favorites, you know what I mean? Just just because I remember how how legit he was when the big games arose and, you know, it was kind of almost like the Twin Towers with him and Kawhi, you know, with those big games and stuff. Like 30, 30 points in 32 minutes against Gonzaga, 14 of 18. It's crazy, dude. We had an incredibly high shooting percentage, always around the basket. He could hit for three, hit his free throws. I mean, a brilliant passer. Like, he, he had a total all-around game. Billy White, guys, loved the interview, loved his playing time here in the red and black on the Mesa. We appreciate Billy White. Number 32, great number. Great number. Billy White. No, guys, looking forward to many more episodes coming up uh, very, very soon. Talk about the team, break down the schedule, and uh, make sure everybody is going to check out the NIL shop. We got Jaden Ladee's new collection, so make sure you guys go check it out. And uh, looking forward to more episodes with you guys. Let's get this season going. Can't wait to get that Jaden Ladee ab shirt and rock it at the ass. <laughs> Abdominals. Yes. I think you look great, with no sleeves. Get some... Get some... Some suntan going and, and get some, some. You can work out. I think you should work out with Jaden one time, and then you know what I mean. I think that'd be a great video. I think I'd probably die. <laughs> He'll be curling oh. you. He'll be curling you. Make sure you get on video. All right, on behalf of SD Sports Fiend, Mike Tortola, this is Mateo San Diego signing off. Telling you, sons of Montezuma.com. Go Aztecs. Go Aztecs. Go Aztecs. Go Aztecs. Ain't no stopping it with team on three and family on six. And when you hit done, it all means this. We game time ready. Welcome to my gym where the crowd.